Hey, what's going on guys? John the Video Guy here. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over transitions in Premiere Pro. What are the best ones? You see them advertised everywhere. In today's video, I'm gonna go over Studio Planet's version of these transitions and overlay packs that you can use in your video editing project. You know, they're all very similar and they all kind of work the same way. So I hope this video kind of explains you know, how it works inside Premiere Pro and you can kind of see the effect that you're getting if you decide to purchase one of these. So inside Premiere Pro, how the transition pack works is I'll actually go to the finder and when you download it, you actually get a pack. So, you know, this not only works for Premiere Pro, you can use Final Cut and other video editing softwares. So, but in this example, I'll go in the Premiere Pro folder and what you'll notice is there's different um, Premiere Pro projects. So say if you're working on a 4K project, you can import these projects based on your own project settings. Once you import the project, uh, you'll notice a presets folder where you can open up uh, basically nested sequences that have these different transitions built into them. Um, the one I'm importing, I already kind of uh, organized the bins the way I wanted to. So you're gonna to have to do this if you decide to purchase this, kind of organize and make a template project, I would say, uh, and then import them into your project. So, you know, I recommend having this on your SSD or your editing station, kind of like it's always there, and you can just import the, these templates as needed per project that you're working on. So in Premiere Pro, what I'm gonna do is file import, and I'm gonna to navigate to where that lives. So for me, it lives here, and then I'm just gonna import the entire project. And just keep in mind, it's pulling from the assets folder, all the different assets and whatnot. So just make sure you don't move anything, otherwise things become unlinked. So once you download and buy this, I would just put it somewhere on your SSD, somewhere on your hard drive, and basically don't touch it again. All right, so it has imported here, and basically you'll see that I still have my original project here, you know, with the two video clips in the sequence, but also it imported basically the transition packs. So if we untroll this, and I'll do tilde, and we can see full screen here of the projects panel. Uh, there's an assets folder that basically includes all the assets, and then basically all these folders are the different types of transitions that you get with this pack. So for example, we'll untwirl camera and you'll see that there's camera snapshot, snapshot blur, flash. So there's different types of, uh, of the same type of category. They're all camera focused, but there's different types of these transitions. Camera is not the best example. If we go down to say zoom, zoom is a good example. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom in fast, zoom in out fast, zoom in optic. So you can get the point, especially like with pan. If you go to pan, you know, pan left, pan right, pan up, pan down. So you can kind of see it's a pan. So the transition is the same, but it's in different ways. So either different directions or different looks and feels. Some have easy ease, some are smooth, have a blur. So you'll just have to kind of see as I go in and show you guys this, you know, the different types of transitions. All right, so for camera, so if we open up the sequence, I'll show you how it works. So you'll see there, this is a sequence. I'll mute that. And it does come with a sound effect, which is pretty cool. So, you know, not only do you get transitions, you also get sound effects. So what you can do is basically copy this in the sound effect if you wish to have it, copy it, go back to your sequence, and then paste it. Just make sure that you don't override your footage. You can zoom in here and you'll just want this cut over that. So there you go. That's basically how that works. So over here, this is just for an example to show you something that's underneath it. And then you just wanna copy these top layers and this guy over. You know, you don't have to use a sound effect if you want. You know, they put it in for every transition there is a sound effect. So this is camera. And basically all the other ones are just a little different, but alterations of it, 
This one's kind of cool, it goes out of focus, so that's what blur is. Flash, I'm assuming kind of like a, yeah, it kind of dips to white almost. Zoom, so it kind of zooms in and out, and you can see there's adjustment layers on this one. So like for this one, we'd copy all the adjustment layers as well as the sound effect. Go back into sequence, delete this, move them over to that cut point. And you can kind of see that. There's this guy. Camera snapshot. Camera snap snapshot with a flash. So that's camera. Elastic. So that's pretty cool. And then there's pan right, pan up, down, left, right. Fade. So that's pretty cool. It kind of basically just a blur with a cross dissolve. And there's vertical and horizontal. So it's kind of like a directional blur, so you can imagine that horizontally and vertically. Film. And what you'll notice is once you start opening this, it's it, the timeline gets cluttered. So how I usually like to edit is I'll close, we'll go back to our sequence here. And what I like to do is work with two timelines. So basically what I'm gonna do is move the sequence that I'm working on that I wanna add effects to, or sorry, these transitions to, and I'm just gonna kinda of position this right over all of these transitions. That way when I open up, like, you know, film roll up, it's opening it down here, and you know, you can expand this a little bit. That way you can easily copy these and paste them back over here very easily and efficiently, going back and forth basically between your transitions timeline and your project timeline. So that's a good way to kind of, you know, work around, you know, the space issue because once you start opening all these transitions, you know, your timeline panel is going to, you know, overload like this. So so basically just work with two Premiere Pro timeline panels. All right, so let's see what we got here. For now, um, I'll just close this. You know how that works now, basically adding adding uh, the transitions to the project. So you kind of have that idea. I'm just gonna go over through the rest of these transitions to show you what is included with this pack so you have a better understanding of what you're buying. All right, so I can't remember where we were. So film, so film just basically has, it is pretty cool, but you know, use it sparingly as you know, all these transitions. It's basically a film roll that goes up and down. Flares, so there's a lot of flares in here that all vary, you know, and it has the millimeter of the lens that was captured with the flare. So, you know, there's basically all your lens flares. 50 millimeter, 105 millimeter, flare frost, flare genta, flare beam, flare anamorphic. So that's pretty cool. There are some anamorphic, if you are in a project and you have a lot of anamorphic footage, there are a lot of anamorphic transitions in here. So that's good to know. Halo, solar, ray light. You kind of get the idea here. They kind of just gave fancy names to all the flares. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, they're all variations of lens flares in different directions. So the next one's glass, which is pretty cool. just in different directions. Glitch, which is pretty cool if you're working on a certain type of project that uh, can benefit from this. And what's really nice is the sound effects, you know, because if you're a video editor and you add a glitch transition, it's nice that this has a glitch sound effect to it. And just for context, I'll show you what that sounds like. The transition sound effects aren't that bad. I have to say, I use them, depending on the project I'm working with, I use them sometimes. 
um, and it's pretty good quality. So, you know, different directions here for the glass. And uh, sorry for the glitch. Uh, I got noise. They're kind of like a television bag signal type of thing. See, you got light leaks. There you go. So a bunch of different light leaks. They're just numbered, just different uh, probably colors and sound effects. There's offset. So just different directions there. Pan. I use pans a lot. I have to say I have all of them. Pan, zooms, and warps I use a lot in different highlight videos, especially fast-paced edits, where you just want to keep you know an exciting type of edit uh, going. I use these a lot. Now, the issue with this transition, as well as like some of the zooms, is that they use a motion tile effect or some type of motion tile effect where if you notice, you do see double. So you see like in this example, the vehicle, it comes in and you see this vehicle here. You know, use them sparingly, but you know, I think this is a thing we notice as video editors, but you know, possibly if you're working with a customer, they might not notice it, but it's something to see. It really depends on the footage you're working with, you know, how obvious uh, the motion tile effect is for these transitions. So th that's pan. And what is nice about pan, they're slow and fast. So if you need a faster pan or something a little slower, there's those options for the different speeds. Pan 3D. <laughs> it kind of like does a warp thing where it kind of comes at you and back. So, you know, I, I've never used them, but that's there. Panoramic. That's cool. I use these sparingly, you know, like on music drops or different, you know, scene transitions. Um, you know, it really depends on the project you use it for. I just used this one for a highlight video recently. Perspective. So this is cool. It's like you're going in and out of different areas. So take a look. So like, for example, you're going in left. So you're basically going kind of like zooming in and going to the left. So it's kind of Combining pan, or not really pan, but like zoom, but you're kind of like zooming in and out of different areas. So that's what perspective is. And you know, there's all these different uh, areas. So it's really nice if the shot's motivated, you can use, you know, if the car is going right, you can kind of follow it and, you know, go to different directions using these transitions. So you have all these different directions that you can use. RGB. So it's kind of like color admiration here. Blech. So, you know, kind of like a color distortion going on here, which is pretty cool. Kind of like, kind of a mix between color and kind of like the noise or glitch that we saw earlier. Shake, shake's pretty cool. Here's vertical shake, horizontal. Shake, zoom in. So it kind of shakes and zooms in. Spin, it does like a full spin. Kind of like that. And then there's easy ease. So some of these do have easy ease, you'll notice. So, you know, if it doesn't have easy ease, it's just linear, it just does it. But easy ease, it smoothly goes in and comes to a stop. Something like that. Spin 3D. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a fan of the 3D, but if you guys can find a clever way to use it, go for it. Split, split's pretty cool. You have to watch it. And like I said before, it really depends on the footage that you're working with. It's really awkward if it's a person and you do a split, like they literally cut in half. But like for flowers, you know, or certain objects, it's pretty cool. So you got that type of transition vertically, diagonally and you know, fast, so different speeds. Then there's stretch. That's pretty cool. Kind of distorts it, pulls it. 
then there's strobe. So it kind of adds a strobe effect and kind of like a, you know, a dip to white basically, and it pulls it left and in different directions. So you notice left, right, up, down, upwards. Then there's warp. I use this, it's pretty cool. It's kind of like 3D, but not as aggressive, I think. So, you know, on the 3D note, I do use warp a little bit here and there for different transitions, especially up and down are pretty cool. Very lively. And then lastly is zoom. So, you know, your simple zoom in, out, all that stuff. I use zooms quite a bit. The zooms and the pans I use most often from this set. And easy ease is more ease. So there's a lot here. So there you have it. That's the review for Studio Planets Transition Pack for Premiere Pro. As I said earlier, this it does work for Final Cut as well. I don't use Final Cut, but I'm sure it works very similarly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel if you like these type of videos. I post twice a week here, Monday a tutorial, just like this one, and then Thursday on some type of video production or editing topic. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.